Hello guys, welcome back to the hybrid model for another video. My name is T and let's get into it. So today the topic is on my time, time I spent working at a med tech startup and uh, you know how I juggled <coughs> working there whilst I uh, was studying my PhD part time. Now to kick things off in 2018, I left Thought River, which was an early stage startup I was working at for about a year. Now, I already spoke about my time working there at, the, at Thought River uh, in a previous video, and the uh, video will be pinned in the this corner over here. So, yeah, whatever, this corner, the one where the cards are. Yeah, it'll be linked there. But anyway, <clears throat> so... Yeah, so in 2018, I think it's roughly mid-2018, I left Thought River. And the reason was, it was, it was very overwhelming and difficult for me to maintain my PhD research, PhD research progress whilst also meeting the expectations of working at an early stage startup. And it was an intense period uh, my PhD research was suffering, my performance at work was suffering, and it was clear that I, this was not sustainable. Now, I take full responsibility for the situation I was in because I'm the one who started studying a PhD part-time whilst working at an early stage startup, and I believed I could balance the two and, you know, push forward. But reality said otherwise, slapped me in the face, and humbled me a bit, not a bit, a lot, <laughs> humbled me. And so I pretty much made the difficult decision of leaving uh, Thought River because it was in the best interests of, best interests of both myself and my well-being and Thought River and, you know, their goals as a business uh, and the team of people I was working with. So funny thing, actually. Around uh, the same time I left Thought River, I started like losing my hair. It's when I started going bold. I didn't go full bold the way I am now, but that's kind of when the process started. Now, I'm not blaming Thought River for <laughs> me going bold. Uh, I blame the situation I was in, essentially. But no, the situation I put myself in because of my life goals and ambitions and all that. So, you know, it is what it is. Sacrifices are to be made. My hairline was one of them, you know. In the grand scheme of things, it's a small price to pay, you know. So, yeah, that's the thing. And uh, just to finish off this segment on Thought River, I <clears throat> learned a lot from working at Thought River, and it was, it's, it's, it's working there is what tr triggered the desire to attain rarity and push forward in my life to level up in all aspects of my life essentially so for that and a bunch of other things i will always be eternally grateful to thought river and the people i worked with there some of most of which i'm still good friends with and i'm much in touch with now at the moment uh <clears throat> but yeah so roughly a month after i left thought river i joined owlstone medical i might Put, end up like putting the name in the in the, on below me on the screen or in the description. Uh, they were a mature startup at the time, at the time when I joined. Obviously, I'm not sure if they still consider themselves a startup today, but it's been a few years, you know. Uh, but yeah, they were a mature startup and they were in the med tech space essentially, and they are. Mission statement was, I have to read this, hold on. So their mission statement was, or is, sorry, I actually looked this up today. Um, or, yeah. Uh, so their mission statement is to develop a breath biopsy platform to perform early detection of diseases such as lung cancer. I hope you heard me because there was a loud vehicle passing by. But yeah, uh, 
that's pretty much what the mission statement was when I was working there, early detection of uh, lung cancer and other diseases using breath analysis, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a worthwhile mission, mission to get behind. And, you know, I really, I really enjoyed working there. In fact, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, no, I did, sorry. <laughs> I did enjoy working there, but like the mission itself did draw me in a lot. It's one of the reasons I, uh, I ended up get, going to work there. Now, upon joining Alston in 2018, I f found a, uh, an incredible PhD community. Uh, it would seem that Alston had a lot of PhD, people who held PhDs within their, uh, uh, amongst their personnel. I think even the CEO had a PhD in like electrical engineering, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, and, you know, a bunch of other people had PhDs in mostly science-based, like, research uh, around breath and other things. Uh, but nonetheless, this was quite illuminating and interesting to me because I was studying a PhD part-time, of course, of course. So picking the brains of people who had already gone through that process and they come out the other end was... Well, you know, it's a chance I couldn't uh, pass by. <sighs> That's a loud vehicle. Yes, please, rev along. Come on. Jesus. Anyway. So, yeah, I picked their brains, asked a lot of questions about their experience studying PhDs. And, you know, how they kind of stayed sane. How they persevered through difficult times. And how they sort of just... Just kind of progress through and you know stayed motivated just disciplined you know whatever whatever techniques they were using or strategies if you will because i was looking for generic advice here because most of the people at Austin didn't have computer science degrees a uh, phd sorry most most of them were other disciplines there was like one person who joined after me who was in my team actually a, a fellow computer scientist who held a PhD in computer science, so that became quite handy. But uh, <clears throat> at the time when I was kind of picking everyone's brain about their PhD experience and everything, no one knew I was studying a PhD. Um, I was kind of, you know, still keeping that uh, close to my chest. But I did ask a few of them, if knowing what they knew, of course, if they had to do it all over again, would they do PhDs? Some of them said no. Some of them said yes, they'd go through the same process. And some of them said they'd do it part-time uh, because it would just be better for their own life goals and career goals, etc. And I found that quite interesting. I was like, oh, cool. Glad to know I'm on, a, on the right path for PhDs in some ways, even though it's rare for someone to do it part-time. But, you know, it's great. So that's, that, that's, that was one thing about Austin I enjoyed, just that PhD community that I got to... Uh, leverage uh without them knowing <laughs> i was leveraging them <laughs> in the way i was leveraging them okay that sounded weird but whatever so at alston is where my career growth and my phd journey truly took shape and came to fruition uh <clears throat> this is because with alston's status as a mature startup at the time um I was able to balance my PhD journey, my PhD research, along with all the expectations of me at work. Uh, keep in mind, guys, at the time, I was still a junior software engineer. And <clears throat> I was able to balance the two because it wasn't in as intense as Thought River. Now, I, I want to clarify something here. I'm not saying we were just chilling at our store and just chilling, doing nothing. No, there's a lot of work. It was intense at times, you know, working on certain projects, collaborating with different teams, etc. They went. It, it wasn't like chill. There wasn't an intensity because it was still a startup, but it wasn't as intense as Thought River because it wasn't an early stage startup. So it's just a different type of intensity. I can't really explain it. I, all I can say is it was different, and I think the fact that they were not early early stage kind of contributed to that which was of benefit to me because it meant I could actually <clears throat> balance the scales a bit and work work on both my PhD research and you know fulfill my uh, ex expected uh, 
outcomes at work whilst also growing my career at work. Now, within two years, I went from being a junior software engineer to being a senior software engineer. And <clears throat> this was in part because of, I believe, three things. So the first thing was I was hungry for it. I was constantly learning outside work alongside my PhD. Uh, I was constantly learning new skills, working on side projects to improve my tech skills, piggybacking on things I'd learned at work and then trying to progress them further in my own personal projects. So I learned more, found new techniques, new, not, new skills, etc. And also I was still doing my uh, PhD on side guys. So yeah, I just kind of juggled both, you know. <clears throat> so that hunger was there to progress. And secondly was the team I was a part of, the tech team I was part of was just brilliant. I was amongst truly talented engineers, man. Varying experience and people who had been in the industry for way longer than me. And uh, I took that opportun opportunity to learn as much as I could from them and uh, benefit from those, you know, from those relationships. And number three is, <clears throat> as part of that tech team, I had the privilege of uh, collaborating with a variety of like people, a variety of people with uh, different uh, disciplines. So collaborated with mechanical engineers, clinicians, lab personnel, project managers, of course, uh, and the IT department on a variety of like projects. And uh, <clears throat> that just exposed me to a variety of knowledge some of which was domain specific to our stones goals obviously within the med tech area and some was just generic within the tech field tech field but applied to the domain we we were operating in which is the med tech you know domain and just constantly collaborating uh on with all these different teams just you know gave me gave me the opportunity to uh, acquire new skills constantly. I also had the opportunity to collaborate with a team of data scientists, another brilliant group of people, guys. Yeah, I've truly been blessed to work with some talented people in my time, if I do say so myself. You know who you are, guys. The people I'm like referencing without naming anyone. Uh, so yeah, I got to collaborate with those guys as well, <clears throat> which was fantastic. And they happen to be also working on some machine learning projects for their team and department and whatnot. And I always, you know, discuss machine learning stuff with them, concepts, ideas, you know, uh, understanding what they were working on, kind of data they were working on, which was completely different to what my PhD is about, but it's still machine learning. So we could still, you know, exchange some ideas. And... <clears throat> It was, it was brilliant. So I also even shared with them some stuff I'd discovered or some tools I'd worked with in my machine learning experiments. And so they benefited from that interaction as well. So I wasn't just taking, I also gave back as well. So, you know, uh, I, I added value to them. They added value to me, you know, mutually beneficial relationships there and, uh, and uh, leveraging those uh interactions so it was brilliant and it definitely did help with progressing my phd research a lot more especially within between year two and year three because that's when i was primarily working on machine learning experiments for my research so this is starting to sound more like a career growth video or how to progress in your tech career as a software engineer kind of video which it's not so we're going to switch things up and talk about what I was doing on the PhD side of things during this period as I was working at Alston and, uh, <clears throat> you know, you know how that was going. Now, on the PhD side of things, I pretty much kept, kept a uh, similar schedule to the one I described in the Thought River video. Again, go and check that video out. Link is in the description and in the top. Whichever corner that is, guys, just that corner uh, where the cards are. And uh, yeah, I'll just summarize the, the schedule. 
um, in case no, some of you don't go to watch the video. So essentially, I would wake up at 6 a.m. For an hour, I do some PhD research, whatever, whether it was experiments, reading some research papers, writing a journal paper, whatever it may be. And then uh, I'd get ready for work and then leave for work around uh, 7.45 and then go to work until like 5.30, hit the gym between 5.30 and 6.30, primarily because trying to get home at that time was just not going to happen because there was just major traffic and I didn't want to sit in traffic for like two hours so I just hit the gym for an hour and then head home around 6.30 so I'd be home around 7.30, 8 o'clock you know, do meal prep for the next day and then do an hour, maybe two of PhD stuff bed, rinse, repeat um, and some of you might be confused as to why I was driving to work remember guys, this was before the pandemic hit so this was 2018, 2019 time so <clears throat> yeah, traveling to work was still a thing. Sitting in traffic was still a thing. How times have changed. But anyway, I kept that same schedule. And yeah, just pretty much kind of just kept going. Um, yes, my life has been very boring over the last five years. I admit that. But I knew that signing in to the whole PhD part-time whilst working full-time and pushing my career forward. I knew that walking in. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is. And um, in 2020, when the pandemic hit and the lockdowns came into effect, my schedule did change. And uh, I will talk about that in a separate video because that's just the whole thing. So we're going to leave that alone. Now, in 2018, 2019, the primary focus from my research was to do the machine learning experiments that I needed to do to build the machine learning classifier that would end up, you know, doing the, uh, the pr producing the predictions I needed to, I needed it to produce for my uh, research to meet its aims and objectives. If you are curious about what my research actually entails, I'll leave a link in the description as well for that one. But yeah, so that was my primary focus. And I also worked on building the prototype framework, which was part of my research objectives. Now, I'm not sure I've mentioned the prototype framework before now, so I'm just gonna pretty much quickly describe what it is. So in a nutshell, the prototype framework is a concept I came up with to build a web application that would visually uh, depict my research and make it easier to test and and uh, visually see the machine learning capability in action so you'd actually plug in a uh, product review and then get a prediction at the end of what the activity uh, my you know research uh, predicts the consumer used the product for basically so that's what it is in a nutshell and at some point I will do a kind of demo of it um, on the channel. My time working at Alston was memorable. I cherish all the experience I got there and the knowledge, the growth, all of it, you know, it's invaluable to me. And it's something that, uh, yeah, has really pushed me forward in my career, PhD, all of it, you know. So thank you to Alston for that. Now, this is not my one and only video about Alston. I'm going to make a few more in the coming weeks as well for other things that I kind of, that, that, you know, I experienced while I was there that were really positive for me uh, in my journey. But in this video, I tried to condense roughly two years of my Alston time into a video. And the truth is I didn't do justice at all. So if you have any questions about my time working at a medtech startup, a mature startup, or even a Thought River LSA startup, just leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you on those guys uh, the best I can. So yeah, I hope you found this uh, video informative. Actually, hold on. Before I do that, one thing I was going to say is I actually spent about three and a half years working at Alston, so there's still some iceberg for me to, uh, 
you know chip through there and talk about so yeah again that'll come in some future videos but yeah i hope you found this video informative and yeah, a little bit entertaining and uh yeah guys i will catch you guys in the next in the next video signing out